We always love it when the audience comes back for the second act. It means a lot. Thank you. Woo! Um, we did, on a serious note though, we did get about um, six emails and two letters over intermission. So a quick point of uh, a clarification, uh, Bethany. We want to point out that Creed Public Schools is ranked number one in the region by literacy. <laughs> <laughs> so we are the best educators. Woo! educators and students. Yes. <laughs> Our kids, our kids are going to read so good. <laughs> All right. Let's see what I did there. All right. Um, so we're going to switch it up this second act, friends. Uh, instead of getting a suggestion, we're going to bring down a storyteller who's going to tell a story that we've never heard before that will inspire uh, maybe some scenes. Could be funny, could be serious, could be anything in between, but we have never heard it. Uh, this storyteller, uh, so backing up for a second, Creed, we've got about 105 company members this year. Pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. And within those 105, there's about like 65 positions, right, jobs in the theater. And this guy has done 58 of them this year. <laughs> His name is Adam Lamb. Give it up for Adam Uh, I'm going to tell this story in front of a group of people. Okay. Um, so this is a story about my experience on an opening night of a show. Um, so flashback to 2019. It is my freshman year of college at Stephen F. Austin. Axe and Jacks. Um, and I was really fortunate to get cast in a lead role. I got cast in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof by Tennessee Williams. Uh, for those who don't know this show... It is, uh, it's a bit of a long one. Uh, it's a, almost three hours, it's three acts. Uh, our intermission is between act two and three, it's a 15 minute intermission. And my character, Brick, is not on stage for about 10 minutes. Um, it takes place entirely in my bedroom, so I am just sitting there most of the time. And my character is an alcoholic, so he has to drink a lot. Uh, and so it was a really amazing show, an amazing rehearsal process. We got a longer rehearsal than most shows get at SFA. And we calculated over the course of these rehearsals how many drinks I was having during the show, which was about 24 to 28 drinks um, of half-filled whiskey cups, which was just dyed water. Um, foreshadowing, you see where this is going. So it, it was always great. And uh, we have a really great school there and they, they do a lot of equity standard things. They give us equity fives and equity 10 breaks to go to the restroom and things like that. And I never had to go. It was never an issue during these long rehearsals that were longer than the show that I had to go to the restroom. It never came up. In fact, my director made a note of it one day. He was like, well, you never have to go to the restroom. I was like, I know. So flash forward to opening night. Uh, a little bit of context, I'm wearing, my costume is a dancer's belt, which is essentially a thong. Uh, I'm wearing a dancer's belt, some boxers, and baby blue silk pajamas. Okay. And, <laughs> and there is a point in, in the show, so act two, uh, is when all the stuff gets aired out, all the family drama, all the things, and it's just me and uh, the father character, his name's Big Daddy. We're in Louisiana in the show. Uh, and so it, it's like the climax of the show. All the things come out, and towards the end of the act, we both have these like five-minute monologues where we have to go downstage, center stage, as close to the audience as, as you can get, and stand in a spotlight as we deliver our monologues. You see where this is going. And so I'm sitting in a chair, and, and Big Daddy's just started his monologue, and I'm acting, I know. And, and I'm, I'm there, and I'm acting, and I'm being drunk. And about two minutes away from him finishing his monologue, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, mm, that's a little tight. Uh, about 30 seconds goes by, and I'm like, Ooh, wow, I'm really going to have to run off stage after this act is over. Uh, another 30 seconds goes by, and at this point, I am breathing carefully. <laughs> I am like... <sighs> and he finishes his monologue. He leaves. I now have to get up and do the exact same thing. I get up, and I'm sure if you had lifted up my shirt, it would have been washboard abs. Because I am clenching. I am holding. And I'm like... <sighs> and I'm, I have a crutch. My leg's broken. 
And I'm walking down and I'm like, you got it, just use it. Use it for the monologue. It's emotional, just, just use it. And I start this monologue and I'm here, I have my crutch here and I have placed my glass right here. And I'm a little drunk by this point in the show and so I'm moving and things like that. This arm did not move, it was stationary. And I get about 30 seconds into this five minute monologue and it starts like Morse code. It's like, <laughs> about 15 more seconds. About, this is my day. Also, I should note this is my debut. This is like freshman don't get lead roles. This is a main stage. This is a big deal for me. And this is opening night. All my professors are there. My family is there. The house is packed. An audience of 200 people. And and yeah, another 15 seconds goes by. And, and about another 30 seconds goes by. And the whole time, arm moving, not moving, glass right in front of my area. And I am just like, get through it, get through it, get through it. And this keeps happening. Every 15 seconds or so, I keep getting these little sprinkler bursts. And, and I've, I've told this story over a hundred times. Um, and I used to say that I came to a realization, and that's not what happened. I came to an acceptance. <laughs> of what needed to happen, which was either the dam wall was going to break entirely, or I could relieve enough pressure that the dam held. So I come to this acceptance, and I let out a solid seven second stream. And, and it works, and I, I get through the monologue, and the spotlight fades, and this is the audience. I turn around to go back to my chair, and I look down, and about yay big, on my baby blue silk pajamas, uh, is a dark spot right where my glass was. And I'm hobbling back to this chair, and I'm panicking and freaking out. I'm like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? There's no way people, blah, 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 bing, light bulb. I'm drunk, so I go to sit down in the chair, and I spill my drink. And I really ham it up. I'm like, oh, I pick up the ice cubes. Oh, oh, oh. All these things. We have like five more lines of dialogue. The act finishes. The audience is clapping. We are slowly walking off stage. And the second I clear sight line from the audience, I throw my crutch down. I'm like, no! And I'm pushing people out of the way, trying to get to our dressing room. And the way our dressing room is set up is that you have to go down this really narrow staircase downstairs which means it is a one lane traffic staircase. There was four people coming up, there ended up being five people going down. I was like, move, go, go, go. No one knew what was going on. I was like doing this maneuver. I get into the restroom and, and not to be TMI, it's like a fire hydrant. It's, it's uh, ridiculous. And I now have 15 minutes to clean myself up and finish this show, which is what I do. I, I spend 15 minutes at the paper towel dispenser, like ripping them off and holding up my pajamas and like friction drying them off. My dancer's belt is soaked. The boxer has a way bigger spot. My priority is just what can be seen. I somehow manage to friction dry it off. I stuff my pants with paper towels. <laughs> Nobody knows this. None of my cast members, I've not told anyone what's happening. No one's looked at my crotch, so no one knows what's going on. And we finish the show. It goes great. We, it, the audience goes wild and all that. We go back and I'm changing. And in my mind, I'm like, there's no way nobody saw this. There's just no way. I have to figure out who saw this. So I get out of costume, and the first person I run into is our stage manager, Ash, and she has to call the whole, sh whole show and watch me the whole time, so I'm like, perfect. I'm like, hey, Ash, my monologue felt really weird tonight. I felt like I wasn't in the light. I, felt, I just felt weird, like, how did it look? And Ash goes, it was amazing. That was the best you've ever done. And I was like, awesome, cool. Next person I run into is our director, Jack Hefner. And I'm like, hey, Jack, uh, same thing. I, uh, I didn't feel like I was in the light. Was, that, was my monologue weird? It felt weird. Jack goes, no, that was the best you've ever done it. <laughs> and I keep asking people and everyone is like, what do you mean? That was great. And in my mind, I'm, I'm just convinced that there was one person in that audience who was like, that guy just pissed himself. <laughs> and in a few weeks, they're gonna talk about it and it's gonna get back to me and one of my friends is gonna be like, hey, I heard you 
picked yourself on stage. <laughs> so I don't know if you know the musical Hamilton, but I had a Reynolds pamphlet moment. I had a moment where I was like, this is my narrative. <laughs> and I'm gonna control it. So I start telling anyone who would listen that I beat myself that night. I run into the director of our school of theater. I'm like, hey, Cleo, guess what I did? And I keep telling people, and it instantly becomes a funny story. Everyone is like laughing, it's, it's a good time. All that to say <laughs> is that the next night, at exactly the same time, no, no, no. it happened again. <laughs> I was two minutes out from having to do my monologue, and I was like, what is that? <laughs> and about 30 seconds goes by, and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Not like this. And I'm about a minute away from having to go up, and I was like, I'm gonna piss myself again. Yeah. And I get up there, and it starts the same. It starts with a sprinkler, and at this point, at this point, I know what to do. So, <laughs> so I let out my seven second stream. It works. I turn around, about yay big as a spot. I go back to my chair. At this point, I'm over it. I sit down, I'm like, oh no, I spilled my drink, cool. And it finishes, we clear sightline of the audience. I'm like, move guys, move. Going down the stairs again, there's people going up. I'm like, go down. And they're like, did you? I'm like, yes, again, I did it, I did it. I'm in the dressing room, ripping the paper towels off. I hear the character of Big Daddy, this guy Mike go, Adam, did you do it? I was like, yeah, Mike, I did it again. Thank you for noticing. Finish the act, round of applause, it goes great. Run into my stage manager, how'd I look? I looked great, I peed myself again. Run into the director, how'd I look? I looked great, I peed myself again. I told everyone again that I did it again and everyone's like, is this, like, do you like doing this? Like, is, this do you, is this something that you enjoy? Um, so it only took two nights of peeing myself on stage in front of hundreds of people for me to drink less water during the rest of those performances. And that is my story.